once again, it's time for the House Whisperer Show on WWDB Talk 860. I'm Barry Reisman, inviting you to stay tuned for expert advice about maintaining your house from the roof to the basement, featuring professional home inspector Jack Milne. And Jack's motto is, every house has a story. And uh, he has a lot of stories that he tells us. And uh, Jack, uh, good morning. You are back on the air. Glad to have you here at WWDB. Well, thank you, Barry. I don't know where these weeks go because all of a sudden it's Sunday again. They go too fast. Uh, but, you know, as a home inspector at Trey County, we have been exceptionally busy. Uh, we've been uh, helping clients. Um, I think last week we did about 45 different properties. Wow. Yeah, and it's, it's really neat. I mean, um, we're doing buyers, we're doing sellers, we're doing investors. So this market has been especially busy. And I was at a home inspection meeting not too long ago and talking to my fellow inspectors, and we're all under the same uh, conclusion that we had such a lousy spring uh, that all of a sudden everyone's looking to, uh, to buy real estate. And for those of you who are out there who are looking, this is the time. I mean, you know, the, 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 the interest rates have not moved. They're still in around 4%. Uh, there's not multiple offers on property, so they are out there. I think the two hundred to four hundred thousand dollar range is still a little bit tight, uh, but you know I was reading in the paper where um, the condo market in Philly is starting to explode again, uh, and and that's a good thing. Uh, so you know we're still not quite sure what's happening with the economy, uh, but there is a feel good nature out there. So if you're sitting on the fence and you're thinking about you know putting that toe in the water and, and taking a look around, I would do it now. And I think the other thing is, is that a lot of people like to, uh, to buy in May and June so that if they have children, they can get them into their school districts if they're changing schools or states or whatever in time for September. Uh, so uh, from the house whisper to your ear, uh, go out. You know, you don't have to buy. Look around. Comparison shop. And but but be very explicit to your realtor as to what you're looking for, so you're not spinning wheels. By the way, speaking about sitting on the fence, that's another topic. Uh, maybe one day we'll do a show about fences. We can do that, Barry. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so today's topic is actually uh, kind of interesting because I talk to parents about this all the time, and it's going to be on child safety. Oh, that's a great topic. Oh, such an important thing. Well, thank you, because you know. I'm really kind of catering this to the two-year-old to the five-year-old because any of us who have been parents or are parents now or grandparents even, you know, this specific age group is is very tough. Um, They're starting to to walk. They're starting to talk. And every every once in a while we tell them to sit down and shut up. Um, But they're explorers too. And so, you know, you can't keep your eye on your kids all the time, but we, at the same time, I, I don't want to turn our houses into fortresses because uh, I know I wasn't raised that way, and I still came out okay. So before we kick into the show, though, I do want to thank my sponsors because, uh, as I always say, without them, I wouldn't be able to broadcast to you today. So I'm going to start with Burrow Exterminating. I, I actually saw uh, Rob Bruno the other night, and we're actually going to have him on the air the next couple weeks talking about some of the changes that have occurred for when it comes time to treating uh, wood destroying insects. So um, I look forward to having him on the air the next few weeks. You can reach out to him at 610-586-5640. He's out of Glen Olden, Pennsylvania, which is in Delaware County, but he does stretch uh, all the way into Montgomery County, of course, Philadelphia, Chester, and Delaware County. So I understand they're also starting to do work in Delaware County, so it's nice to see them expanding. Bucksmont Inspections, on-site sewage evaluations. I'd like to get Rob back on the air because he is a sewage control officer, which means anything that deals with anything that's underground and you flush a toilet and lands on your soils, he is the man to talk to. So his phone number is 215-669-4213. Pest Blaster, they're actually out of Hamilton, New Jersey. They have a branch office here in Yardley, PA. They do radon mold uh, testing, wood-destroying insect evaluations, as well as pest removal. So if anything um, is, is kicking your fancy there, 215-295-5555. 
BrainFlushGear.com. We actually do a motorcycle trip called the Brain Flush. That's coming up in July, so I can't wait to to go to Kentucky. But it, it, they do make specific uh, wear from embroidery to hats to shirts to anything that you wear, even airbrush, they can help you out. And their email is contact at brainflushgear.com. And finally, Tri-County Inspection Company. I always seem to save the best for last. We serve 15 counties um, from the Lehigh Valley all the way down to Salem County in New Jersey, Delaware, Chester, Philadelphia, et cetera. That list goes on. But we're out there for you. And uh, our best number is 215-295-2030. But in the Lehigh Valley, if you're listening, 610-346-7880. And if you're in South Jersey, 856-853-4224. Please visit our website, which is tcinspect.com. So as you all know, I'd like to visit the email box. I'm always curious as to see what comes my way. And Jeff from Malvern commented on the show, uh, what's in your toolbox? And his comment was, my friend told me about your show, and I podcasted it. Uh, I'm not very handy, but the way you advised um, us as to what tools to start with, I went shopping at Sears. <laughs> That's cute. Uh, so, Jeff, there you go. Uh, for all those dads who have celebrated Father's Day last week, I hope you all made out. So please send me your emails to thehousewhispershow at gmail.com. And for past episodes, uh, from two years ago even, you know, visit the website, which is thehousewhispershow.com. Anything from home maintenance to just good ideas. And, of course, podcasting is always available at www.dbam.com. So look for me and, and listen in. So going into gear here, I guess that's a motorcycle term, for today's show is going to be, again, about child safety. For those little guys who are about two to five years old, and again, for all of us who have had children or are about to, or for those grandparents or, who are helping their children and going through this process again, uh, this show's for you. And I know for me the saddest day w- was when my wife handed me this bag of stuff uh, from either the dollar store, Kids Are Us, Babies Are Us, and the list goes on, as you know, for all the things to help kid-proof your home. And what I find ironic is that, again, uh, in my family, there were five five children, parents, moms, and dads, and a dog in the 60s and 70s. And we actually did a really great job as as to, you know, controlling the, the kids. Uh, but now this, this kid-proofing is actually a multi-million dollar business. So, and I think like anything else, they put, try to put the fear of God into you that you need all these devices uh, to prevent your children from getting hurt. But I think, again, it always comes down to good parenting. So for this show, I'm going to be a little bit more practical because I think anyone can plug, you know, one of those little receptacle protectors into the old-style plugs. But today's receptacles actually have a gate, and these are brand new, folks. I mean, they, they've been on the market now maybe five months uh, to, pre- to protect either little Johnny or Jenny from sticking things in the receptacles. Uh, but again, later on this one, I know I did that as a kid. I put the key in the screen, in the in the receptacle. Like it knocked me on my butt, and I did it once, and I didn't do it again. But this is how we learn sometimes. But w- let's start with the stove. I think this is probably one of the most important things to talk about because I see these new electric stoves that actually have the heat below the glass. And at, at two years old, when the child is walking and almost talking. These new stoves really flash on quick. I mean, within 20 seconds, I mean, these, these burners are hot. But what's most important is that they also flash off quick. But the top of the, the countertop or the top of the stove is still hot for a good 20 minutes. And as adults, we can see this little light glow that says, hey, guys, it's hot. But little people will tend to sense the heat, but they may not see it. So it's hard to teach a child that red is hot and especially in and around the kitchen. So um, this is one that you have to pay particular attention to. And some of these, as I call them, idiot lights are on the cooktop itself. So you have to look straight down between the burners to say, wow, it is still hot. And it's not only for the kids, but I do talk to parents who, or families that also have cats, you know, that tend to walk the countertops. But I'll tell you what, it's just like the cat on the hot tin roof. This is going to be the cat on the hot oven. Uh, and cooktops, so they'll do it once and they won't do it again. But 
you know, you have to be very careful with that. Kitchen cabinets, I think always protect the cabinets below the sink. I think that's the most critical uh, sink because this is where we keep our chemicals. And it's not only the drainos, but it also tends to be the windexes, um, you know, the, uh, the stuff to clean the granite or, or the uh, countertops or the wood cabinetry. So it's just full of, of chemicals. And my wife gave me this magnet-type child device that gets installed on the inside of the cabinet. So the magnet helps deactivate it. And I think this is probably one of the best devices I've ever seen. Um, and you could be either King Kong or Godzilla and not open this cabinet. But as a home inspector, we have to seek out this magnetic, what I call, key to see beneath the cabinet. If it's not available, honestly, folks, I can't check it. So they tend to attach it to something that's magnetic, uh, be it the um, refrigerator or the side of the refrigerator, uh, the top of the stove. I mean, if you have one of these devices and you know your home is up for sale and going to be inspected in the short term, uh, just make sure you keep this key available for the home inspector. Uh, but this is a very good locking mechanism. Uh, there's also the type that you have to push down with your finger or push in from the side of the door. Um, these tend to, at least in my eyes, be a little bit more problematic because sometimes it's hard to reach all the way in to deactivate it. And um, uh, that was one I wasn't very excited about putting on in my home. Uh, so I gave it a quick try, and within a few weeks I took it back off. I found it was more of a nuisance. But, you know, one of the things that I try to do is keep one drawer available for the kids, and that would be the Tupperware drawer. Can't get hurt in there. Let them play with the lids. Let them bang the pots. But I think if we give them one drawer that they can have fun and frolic in, they won't be tempted to, to go into the other ones. Um, like I said, the kitchen sink, though, is the one to, to protect um, and, and do your best for that one. So how about this one? I have a neighbor who has an in-swinging basement door. So most basement doors open out. So when you want to approach the basement, if you have to open the door and it goes into the stairwell, that's an automatic falling down for a small child because they want to hold on to the handle, but they can't reach that far. So for those of you that have that in-swinging basement door, my suggestion would be is get a new door, get it pre-hung that can swing out. Granted, it, it may cut down on a little bit of your traffic uh, because you have a door that's in the way. But again, even older adults have problems with this because they have to reach so far in that they have to kind of hold on to the side of the door jam to reach in and grab it because you can't close it behind you because it's going to hit your ankle. And then all of a sudden you trip on the floor going up the steps. So either way, folks, if you've got one of these in-swinging basement doors, honestly, I think it's safer not to have a door at all than to have that type of, of basement door. So take a look at that one. That one we don't give too much thought about, but I do. So let's see. What else do, do, I, do I have on my little list here? Well, I'll tell you what, how about if we, go, we, we, we had to take a little break. How about we do that and uh, wow. come back? Okay, the time's going quick, Barry. Yeah, yeah let's, let's go ahead and break for a commercial. Okay. Listen to my sponsors, and please do me a favor. If you know and, and plan to use these folks, let them know that you heard their ad on the House Whisperer Show, because that helps me help them. They would love to hear that. It's music to their ears. There you go, Barry. Yeah. So we'll let you take it away, and we'll be right back. La, 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 la. Oro Exterminating has been specializing in wood-destroying insect inspection and control for over 40 years, serving Philadelphia and the surrounding counties. All inspectors are state certified and ensure providing their clients with professional inspections and treatments. Oro not only performs conventional termite treatments, but also handles special services like historic buildings and homes with wells, creeks, or ponds. The client is assured that all treatments will be performed safely when you hire Boro to do the work. They also provide radon testing in their service area. Boro's full-time office staff is available to help you schedule an appointment. Just call 610-586-5640 or send an email request to boroinspects at verizon.net. That's 610 
586-5640 or email at furrowinspects at verizon.net. Specially created t-shirts by BrainFlushGear.com offer the extreme sports enthusiast an opportunity to have a clothing line available that suits their sport. BrainFlushGear.com understands that when we get the moment where we can jump on our motorcycles, wave runners, surfboards, snowmobiles, or skateboards, it can be priceless. They offer custom artwork including silk screening, transfers, and embroidery. Speak to one of their consultants today and they'll help you create your own Brain Flush. Visit BrainFlushGear.com or email them at contact at BrainFlushGear.com. For your septic inspection and testing needs, please consider Bucksmont Inspections. They've been serving the Bucks and Montgomery County areas for over 15 years. As members of the Pennsylvania Septage Management Association, the Pennsylvania Association of Sewage Enforcement Officers, and the Pennsylvania Association for Professional Soil Scientists, Bucksmont Inspections can inspect your existing septic system or test for your new septic system placement. Please call Rob Bowie at 215-666. 4213 and say you heard their ad on the House Whisperer show. As the summer months quickly arrive and the temperatures gradually rise, so do the odds of all those filthy and unwanted critters invading your home like rodents, roaches, termites and flies. Oh my. This summer, if you want to feel safe and secure from a possible creeping, crawling disaster, do yourself a favor and call the exterminating experts at Pest Blaster for all your pest control needs, including tests for radon and mold. Please visit PestBlaster.com and you'll be sold. 215-295-5555. Tri-County Inspection Company has been providing professional home inspections, commercial inspections, and historic property evaluations for over 25 years. Tri-County Inspection Company covers 13 counties, serving both New Jersey and Pennsylvania. They've performed inspections for over 70,000 clients and are members of the American Society of Home Inspectors, as well as the Pennsylvania Home Inspectors Coalition. They are licensed in both Philadelphia and New Jersey. For all of your real estate transactions, Actions. Call Tri County Inspections at 215 295 2030. For their New Jersey clientele, call 856 853 4224. In PA, call 215 295 2030. In New Jersey, 856 853 4224. And we're back once again. Jack Milne is here, the house whisperer. What an important subject today, child safety. And uh, there are so many dangerous spots in the house. And uh, thanks so much for pointing them out to us, Jack. Uh, let, let, let's, let's hear more. Okay. Well, thank you, Barry. Before the break, we're again, this whole segment is about child safety. For those little people that are from two years old to five years old, so the next point I'd like to get into is gates and stairways. And you know what? The kids are actually smarter than adults when it comes to these things. Uh, the gate should always open away from the stairway, not towards it, similar to our basement door. If the child figures out how mom's been opening this gate 20 or 30 times a day, they're going to figure it out, and then they're going to fall down the steps. So preventive maintenance, folks. Windows, windows, any window that is eight inches or lower to the floor should be tempered. So there should be a stamp on the glass. It should be found in one of the corners of the window, so look for that. And another safety issue is uh, windows and stairwells. Uh, Because if kids fall down the steps, they can get hurt when the glass breaks. So tempered glass is going to break like your front car windshield. It breaks into a bunch of little pieces instead of large shards. Uh, and you can replace a sash if you have to, okay? Next is railings. And I can't tell you how many homes I've inspected, especially split-level homes, where there can be four sets of steps that don't have any railings. And for these young people, as they want to either crawl up the steps or they want to slide down the steps, most kids get hurt falling down the steps. So as adults, why not help them hold on and show them how to hold the railing? And especially when they're young, they use two hands. Uh, And then eventually as they grow, they'll go back to one hand. But most homes have 13 steps. Those of you who have nine-foot ceilings on the first floor may have 15 steps. 
but how many steps doesn't matter. Safety does. So railing should be installed on open walls uh, to prevent what I call the parachutists, because I was one of those too. Um, and they're the kids who jump off the end of the tread to the floor below. And again, um, I know I did this uh, in, in the house I grew up in leading to the basement. So um, when the railing's in the open side, it's harder to, it's harder to do that. Um, and keep in mind, from two years old to five years old, they're quick. You know, so the one moment they're here and they're gone the next. No so matter how much you holler, you know, they're, they're in the other room already. Um, I would suggest locking the doors uh, when home alone. Um, and that's to the exterior. But no double locking deadbolts, though. Double locking deadbolts are the, are the locks that have the key on the inside. Okay? And so I always tell my clients during home inspections to switch back to the thumb latch, no matter the style of door. If it's an insulated door, you can't break it with a hammer. I mean, you've got to bang the, the stuff out of it uh, in order to break that glass. So fire safety is always a must. And fire marshals are advising the home inspectors to tell our clients to remove interior locks with keys. So no matter your age, in a fire you are crawling along the floor to get out. And if you can't, um, you know, if you can't find the keys, it gets real bad. And bars or windows or barred storm doors are worse. And, and they may, may be pretty and can be locked, but in a fire you can't escape. Uh, so from the house whisper, do away with the bars and buy a security system. It can save your life in, in, in a multitude of ways. Um, think about putting a small deadbolt on the utility room uh, if it's on the primary level. And the utility room is what houses your furnace, your air conditioner, your water heater, uh, sometimes washers and dryers. You know, so a small deadbolt will keep the kids out, but it will allow for easy access for an adult. And talking and talk to the laundry room, keep all your laundry soaps and chemicals up high. Keep them out of reach. Um, all, else, all household chemicals you should really treat that way. And speaking of water heaters, check your water heater temperature. Electric water heaters have elements behind covers that are, 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 are screwed shut. But gas water heaters have a dial that can be easily turned. And the consequences can actually be drastic. And I hear too many stories about Johnny or Jenny that turned the water heater valve on the tub and scalded their sibling. You know, so for those of you who have gas water heaters, keep in mind that one notch on the dial raises the temperature 10 degrees. And the word hot on that dial is actually scalding. So I, I see a lot of homes where the temperature is actually too hot. I can't turn it down because I have to leave the home as is. Uh, but I do advise my clients in the report to turn it down immediately upon possession. I put that word immediately in bold print. So also, with this being summer, turn the temperature down. I mean, why take a hot shower when it's already hot in the morning? It should be time for cool showers. And if you do have those small children, any scalding devices are now available for, for tub and shower fixtures. It's about a 300 to a $400 investment but that includes the purchase and the installation. So one handle turns on the pressure, the dial sets the temperature. I just put one of these in my home for my son, and uh, granted, he's 22, he's a little bit older, but you know, I see these now more and more, and what's nice for him is he can set his water temperature and have that temperature day in, day out from this point forward. So it's, it's really kind of cool for us adults too. Oil water heaters, are, are the same findings with gas. There is a dial, um, and you you know you should adjust the water temperature because during this time of year, if if you're using a lot of coal to tone down the hot, you're just wasting money, you're wasting energy, and uh, that's not the name of the game. Summer winter hookups uh, are are water heaters that are found within the boiler itself. There's a dial behind a. Um, a Honeywell controller that can set the temperature. So during the winter, those settings should be set at 180, 160. Uh, but for the summer, lower it. It w again saves money because who, again, who wants a hot shower on a, on a hot morning? But last week, I did a home in Levittown where the high limit was set at 200 and the low limit was at 140 degrees. So this actually allowed scalding water to exit the faucets or the tubs. Um, so, and, and it's, again, a tremendous waste of energy because with these coils, the boiler will fire to 200 degrees every time 
uh, it, hot water is demanded. So I do advise my clients 180, 160 for the winter. Uh, try 160, 140 for the summer. Uh, if you have to, try 170, 150. But there's always a 20-degree difference between the high and low limit. And you'll find these two red dials behind this Honeywell control if you have a boiler with a coil. And um, I always tell my clients to check it right after the oil suppliers come in because sometimes they like to turn it up higher. And the only reason for that is they come to visit your house a little bit sooner to put that oil at $4.25 a gallon into that 275-gallon storage tank. And the moral of this segment is, guys, don't turn your house into a jailhouse. You know, let your kids enjoy the home. I think practicality plays a very large role in how we raise our, our children safely. And, again, as I always say, you know, if you have any questions, please email me at thehousewhispershow at gmail.com. And as it is the weekend, uh, please spend time with friends and family. Next week, we're actually going to talk on decorating rooms. So, Barry, I'll let you do the wrap-up for me, and we'll see you next week. on Wrap the it up, yes. Uh, tune in again next week for another edition of the House Whisperer Show with professional home inspector Jack Mill. Now, you can listen to previous programs, or if you have any questions, visit thehousewhisperershow.com. And this is Barry Reisman. Thank you very much for listening to WWDB. Today